Good evening, I'm Sean Green. This is the Lime Sports World. Well, tomorrow is a big day in women's volleyball. That's when two unbeaten teams in the Goddard Enterprises Division I Women's League will play in the final game of the first round. Although there is still a fair amount of volleyball to be played, the way how the season is going so far, the winner of that game may be a safe indicator as to who will take the 2013 crown. Now, last night in the penultimate games of the first round, Brighton's Rockets and Flo St. Tree Brokers Deacons continued their unbeaten runs with victories over defending champions Warren's Jaguars and the former champs Freaks Customs Chargers, respectively. And at the total opposite end of the scale, there was the battle of the winless size as RBC Carlton and Club United played in their final round game with one of them destined to drop 0-6. CBC's Mark Seeley reports. Rockets here in the blue have been looking quite comfortable all season long. The offsetter Nisio Wood with a back set for Shari Matthews and she spikes it off the blocks. Set now to Katrina Wickham. Her spike is dug by Akila Phillips. Avara Brown would roll it over, but the set again for Wickham, who this time goes for placement. Rockets would win the first set at 19 and the second set at 11. Then they were so comfortable that the youngster Jarell Paris gets her number called and she answers with the score as Rockets took the third at 16 and the game three sets to none over Chargers. Deacon's hair in green matching Rockets with a straight setter of their own against Warrens. Fabia Graves in the middle with the score. Then after a series of miss hits and free balls, it's Graves again, this time with the deception. She looks over her right shoulder, but hits over her left. And if something's working, why change it? Setter Charlene Brown kept on feeding Graves in the middle, to which Warren's had few answers, as Deacons won 23, 19, and 22 in straight sets. The lone men's game saw a progressive in the blue, also easing past Foundation United in straight sets. Akeem Payne there with the venom with the outside hit. They won the first set at 23. Now one macho play is when you get a one-on-one -on -one, and this duel was won by Rico Brathard of Progressive beating Foundation's lone blocker Ramon Blades. They won the second at 13. Macho of macho plays, Fabian Cox within the three meter line. Progressive win the third at 16 and the game three sets to none. Now in the battle of the bottom, Carlton in red took first blood. Tamisha Trotman finally gets it to stay down. Carlton winning that first set 25-22. Club United bounced back. Nicole Puckrin in the middle. She led them to the 25-16 win in the second. And this cross-court kill got them to 25-15 in the third. The club leading two sets to one. Therefore, it's do or die for Carlton. And Aisha Maycock, she wanted to live. Her cross-court winner got Carlton the 25-18 in the fourth. This is set and game point. A block by Janelle Morris on the right. It can't be retrieved and Carlton won that 15-13 and the game three sets to two. Mark Seal, CBC Sports. Well, thanks, Mark. The Rocket Deacons match is set for 6.30 p.m. at the Wildy Gym. Meanwhile, in the men, the last chance for a team to beat the undefeated Chargers in the first round falls on the shoulders of Corvally Medical Insurance Medical Center, that is Deacons. Now, that match is set for 8 p.m. Let's talk some cricket news. After the disappointment of losing the opening one-day international by just one run, the West Indies women's team, they bounce back to take the second today at Sabina Park by a decisive 89 runs. After choosing to bat first in Jamaica, the Wendy's women were dismissed for 148 in the final of their 50 overs. Shaquana Quinton top scored with 29, batting at number 8, while opener Kaisi and Knight got 24. In reply, the Kiwis were scheduled out for just 59, with Stephanie Taylor taking 3 for 10, Quinton 2 for 9, and Chanel Daly 2 for 14. The decisive third ODI will be on Thursday again at Sabina Park. In more cricket news, a half-century from Leroy Lug led the West Indies and the 19s to a six-wicket victory over the Bangladesh and the 90s last night in Guyana. Lug scored 69 as the West Indies youth successfully chased 136 needed for victory in that day-night encounter played at Providence, getting up to 138 for four in 34.4 overs. Jeremy Solozano chipped in with 27. The Windies had won the toss and sent Bangladesh into bat. 
The, the young visitors were dismissed for 135 in 46 overs. Al Zara Joseph took three for 30, and Marquino Minley took two for 15. The second encounter of the seven match 50 over series is set for tomorrow. It's all about claiming the winning ticket, which carries access to a challenge for the World Drafts title next year. The qualifying event started today with the International Checkers and Drafts Festival at the Divi South Winds Hotel. An opening ceremony kicked off the tournament, which is divided into three categories, the men, the women, and the youth championships. In the main address, President of the World Drafts and Checkers Federation, Dr. Richard Beckwith, said a tournament like this will always be needed in order to determine challengers for world heavyweight world title matches. One of the primary functions of WCDF was to have these annual qualification tournaments to uh, determine a challenger to play our current world champion like Ron Suki King, who has been World Goes You Plays champion for many years, maybe about two decades. And, and we also have a three-move restriction world champion who is currently in Italy, that's Michel Borghetti. So uh, the function of this tournament this week would be to determine a challenger for Ronald Suki King in a head-to-head -head match for 2000 in 2014. And of course, the champion they all want to take this title from is Barbadian Ronald Suki King. With two added initiatives, the development of both the women and youth championships are also in focus. With the overall world champion, we're determining a match challenger, but in contrast, the women's world champion and the youth world champion will be determined this week in a tournament format. So there's uh, three sections at stake this week. We'll crown two new champions in women and youth and determine a challenger for Ronald Suki King for next year. It looks like we may have a near record participants and a number of women players in these qualification tournaments, so we're excited about that, and we look forward to the youth tournament taking on later this week. In basketball, defending champs Graydon Silly were not as dominant as they were last year in their season opener, but they've notched up win number one in the 2013 National Sports Council's United Insurance Division II basketball tournament. Playing at home, they defeated Leicester Vaughan by 11 points. Marsha Boyce reports. Leicester Vaughan in green travelled to Graydon City with the hopes of starting their season with a win. But they soon realised it wasn't going to be an easy task. The defending champs got off to a good start, with the first quarter being their highest scoring period. That's Andrew Eiffel leading the way, getting the basket and the foul. And he followed that up by going coast to coast for the easy two. They would lead 16 to 7 after the first quarter. Leicester Vaughan looked a bit better in the second quarter. But this grid and silly unit showed a lot of promise in just their first game of the season. Shaquan Newton picking up two more. Newton and Eiffel led Graydon Silly to the under-16 title back in June and were all to do the same in Division 2. Zachary Cave carried the fight for Leicester Vaughan, but they trailed 26-15 at halftime. Third quarter action, Newton finding Eiffel, who drove to the basket for two of his 16 points. Graydon Seely held Leicester Vaughan to just four in that quarter for a 17-point lead. The Kane Garden-based boys would actually play their best basketball in the fourth, picking up 14 points. Cave would be their only score in double figures, though. He had 11. Newton would go on to end with a game-high 21 points for Graydon Seely. They won this one 44-33. Marsha Boyce, CBC Sports. Well, thank you, Marsha. The Mylars Hill Community 5K Road Race is gearing up for its second event this weekend. Once again, in honor of former track and field coach Anthony Lovell, a number of sponsors are on board, and according to organizer David Oxley, all is looking bright this year. He also told CBC Sports about the new edition of a 2K race. This year we have a 12 jumps race, and um, this race is uh, from ages five, five years old to 11 years old. The distance is a 2K, because you know you don't want the little children out on the road too long. Some little children can handle the 5K, but we more prefer to do the, the 2K for the little kids. Last year we had 200 run, over 200 runners. And this year, we, so far, we have um, about 100 people registered so far. So, and, and kids, about 45 kids so far. So, uh, time now on, on the 13th, 
we're looking for about 150 in Treadman. Well, this race is set for, as he said, Sunday, October the 13th.